good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. My name is Lee and a uh, wisdom management engineer from University of Idaho. I'm talking about the effect of centrifuge and screens on separating solid nutrients and uh, back in ammonia emission from nuclear manure with uh, co author Kevin Kruger, both Kevin and me from the Department of Soil and Water Systems. Kevin's here too with me today. Yeah, we'll give you some uh, brief background information, uh, what we did, uh, what we have learned for this project. So Idaho has a very strong dairy industry. Currently, as we are third uh, largest uh, milk producing state in, uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, as a byproduct milk, huge amounts of uh, manure generated in Idaho. Some of our dairies, especially the larger one, use uh, liquid manure handling system, either flush in their manure land, or maybe just mix in the wastewater from parlor with a vacuum or scrape the slurry manure together. Anyway, generally large amounts of uh, liquid manure. And the solid and nutrients present uh, liquid manure pose at least uh, three challenges to manure handling system. The first challenge is uh, high cost associated with a clean manure storage in the gong. It's a liquid manure with high solids flows to a storage in the gong where some of the solid will settle to the bottom of the gong and reduce uh, the gong capacity. So eventually the solid needs to be removed to restore uh, the gong capacity, which is a cost financial burden for producers. Right now in our area, it costs a hundred thousand uh, dollars to clean a typical 10 million gallon of gong to roughly one cent for per gallon capacity. I think I heard a similar number, maybe even a little higher here yesterday when I visited a local there here in Ohio. The owner told us they have five uh, lagoons uh, with 25 million gallon capacity. Every year they need to clean their lagoon. Costs $300,000 each year, a lot of money. I mean, second, uh, liquid manure with high nutrients, especially phosphorus, will limit uh, land application rate, which means larger area areas are needed for the same amount of uh, liquid manure, which is a significant challenge for most of the confined uh, animal feeding operations. We know the CAFOs have a relatively small land area compared to their herd size. So even the CAFO, has enough land, the need to spray the nutrient over large area, still mandates a costly transportation, large amount of manure, longer distance. Uh, that's another burden uh, to, to our dairy farmers. And the third one, the liquid manure with high solid content, increased potential for plug in the the pipe, transfer pipe in the spring nozzle. So in our area, all the manure kind of flow to the storage lagoon that will apply to the crop land during the growing season. So always require more power to pump the same amount of uh, liquid manure, require higher pressure at the pump. So that's uh, increased risk of uh, rupture seals, manure spills. So our dairymen are very familiar with the challenges and the benefits uh, kind of separating solids and nutrients from liquid manure. Um, almost all adequate dairy use a uh, liquid manure handling system, we use a uh, primary separation like the inclined screen or maybe screw press. However, these things cannot uh, separate out the finer particles. So resulting clean one lagoon every year for some of dairy farmers. So I think a couple of years back, their pioneer there installed on-farm centrifuge. Uh, so other dairymen want to learn more information about the, the performance of centrifuge in terms of separating solid nutrients. I think that's, uh, that's why we initiated the project. The objective of this study was to evaluate the centrifuge in the screen 
on removing solid nutrients from uh, liquid dairy manure and affecting ammonia emission from their treating liquid dairy manure. <coughs> So what we did I think a year now, evaluation on farm centrifuge and screen, uh, removing solid nutrients and affecting money emission from a centrifuge and screen separate liquid dairy manure was conducted. A uh, fresh liquid dairy manure sample was collected monthly before and after screen and a centrifuge yeah, from a local commercial dairy. At the same time, the screen and a centrifuge separate solid will collect from the same site. Uh, they collect solids, analyze for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium by a certified commercial lab. The liquid sample analyzed for total and suspended solids in our waste management lab at the UFI Twin Falls uh, Research and Extension Center. The ammonia emission from the monthly collect liquid manure were evaluated using agua passive ammonia sampler outside the waste management lab under signal condition for a year. Ammonia emission rate were calculated based on the time period and the concentration. From the agua ammonia passive sampler test, here show the liquid manure uh, flow diagram on the commercial dairy site, they have recent paid kind of mix all the equipment, clean water with their vacuum tank, clean the snare manure from there. They pump the manure to a sand lens they're called, uh, where some of the sand removed out of the liquid stream. I just want to point out in, in our area, nobody use uh, sand as bedding material. So this farm use uh, compost as their bedding material. Basically all, all of the sands just blow in to the site. So after sand lands, they pump the manure to the primary screen, it's too parallel. Uh, from there, the manure went through to centrifuge, again in parallel. After that, it flowed to the storage lagoon from there then the central pivot assist to the cropland during the growing season. Uh, the fresh manure we collect uh, before, sometimes we call raw manure, and after the screen, after centrifuge, from location map here, the 135. Also, the screen separate and the centrifuge separate sonic will collect uh, from location map, the, the two and the four. This is uh, the Algoa ammonia passive sampler. Basically, first use, uh, I think, 2% situation saturated to fill the rare. When we collect liquid manure, bring back, we put a one gallon the liquid manure to five gallon bucket and then cover with the lid. The two, two inches hole, we put the passive sampler in the head space for the bucket at a Certain some time will pull out. So the filter will absorb some money nitrogen, then we extract. Uh, then this the quick cam 85 saw the system analyze a bit of report ammonium nitrogen. So from there we can calculate the ammonium emission rate. Uh, we did a full replicate for each raw manure, treated manure. What we have found, this is a kind of solid uh, yeah, from uh, a centrifuge separate left side and a screen separate the right side. So clearly see screen basically just separate the undigested fiber from liquid. It's a centrifuge, has the capacity to separate out the much finer particles. Uh, in the next couple of slides, I will show you most of the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium link to the finer particles. But the uh, undigested fibers, uh, good materials are there and nitrate as a bedding material. I, I even ask, I don't think they even compost, they just blow out kind of a little drier, the, the fiber use bedding materials. Uh, the kind of 
different scenario yesterday when I talked with Derek here, they mentioned uh, this will not work here because their high humidity will cause some disease, something, but in our area, that uh, works fine. This uh, percent total nitrogen in the separate solids, uh, in the blue one is uh, screen separate solids, and orange one is centrally separate solids. So clearly we can see their difference, uh, the total nitrogen concentration in the centrifuge separate solids and the, the screen separate solids. Uh, a year on average of 9.2 pounds per ton of uh, TN in the centrifuge separate solid compared to 5.4 pounds per ton in the screen separate solid. Uh, pretty consistent from January to, to November. Uh, we just short of one month sample because the, the foamy, uh, we cannot get a sample from there. This uh, percent of phosphor pentoxide is a P205 in the separate solids. Uh, again, blue one is green separate solid, and orange represent centrifuge separate solid. Even we see much higher difference uh, between the P205 concentration in the centrifuge separate solid and a screen separate solid. So you're now average eight pound per ton for P205 uh, compared to pound P205 in the screen separate solid, almost four times higher. So our Derman uh, like this number since the phosphorus is really a con is a concern. This uh, Potassium oxide in separate solids, uh, again, similar to the TN, their cyclical difference, the potassium in centrifuge separate uh, compared with, uh, with that in screen separate solids. A year on average, 7.2 pounds per ton potassium versus 4.4 pounds per ton in the screen separate solid. This is a total solid in liquid air manure uh, in the raw before screen, the blue one, the orange one, the after screen, the grease after centrifuge. I mean, after each treatment, we, we saw, I mean, no total solid that makes sense all the, from May to, to November. Uh, this suspended solid in liquid air manure, similar to the total solids after the screen. And after centrifuge, we got a nowhere, nowhere uh, suspended solid in the, in, in the manure. <clears throat> this is a ammonia emission rate versus kind of time. Uh, we didn't see the significant difference uh, amount of ammonia emission rate from the raw and the screen treated and centrifuge treated manure, but we See, like we do see the times kind of uh, is a factor. So in the summer months, we saw the higher ammonia emission rate compared to the winter months, the December, January, February. Uh, uh, this slide shows is a negative <coughs> correlation between ammonia emission rate and the suspended solids for all the three different manure, the raw and the screen treated and the centrifuge treated manure. With higher suspended solid, we, we, we see the lower ammonia emission rate. Here, it's kind of positive correlation between ammonia emission rate and the ambient temperature for all the three different manure. So higher temperature, we saw higher uh, ammonia emission rate, but we didn't do anything regarding the, the pH. I think uh, almost around between seven and eight, maybe a little towards eight, the pH. Uh, there's a couple points, and then we can draw from this, this test. Uh, the centrifuge can further remove finer particles that cannot be removed by primary screens. Uh, centrifuge separate solids contain higher NP and K, especially the phosphorus. Ammonia emission from raw liquid manure 
screen essentially separate equipment or did not show significant differences. The most influenced factor for ammonia emission from liquid manure were ambient temperatures and suspended solids within the liquid air manure. I appreciate financial support from Wes and Sarah. Uh, I think that's all I have for, for you. Any questions or comments? Uh, I have a question about uh, like the size of the centrifuge and how long does it run and is it cost effective? That's a very good question. That's when I met on farm centrifuge. Uh, exactly size, I don't know. I think at least maybe 15 feet. They can process up half a million gallon liquid every day. Uh, I remember numbers, this, the two, this is a big dairy. I was taught every day roughly between 500 to 7. 50, 100,000 gallon. So that's why they purchased two. So kind of don't want the century to work too hard. Uh, they get a 22 ton solids from the primary screen. On top of that, the century get another 24 ton per day. That's, it's, it's big, not like the one we use in the lab. The cost, that's another thing. That's why our dairyman want us to do this research. Uh, if you only purchase one, adding the building concrete, roughly million dollars. Uh, that's why, but I, I'm pretty happy with the result with a couple of years of work. I think our dairyman know this. Right now from uh, just one centrifuge, when, when we started the job, right now we have eight centrifuges running the farm and another six on order and another four, I mean, plant this year. Uh, but if you think about uh, every year you spend a uh, hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, uh, it's not so much, but that is, 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 is too much for me. I mean, for, for me, most of us, uh, but it worked, worked well. Uh, one of the things, key point, since our dairy don't use the sand, but there, the manager did notice if their sand really damage, kind of damage the, the screen, but not too much still within their expectation. Uh, the company, I guess, promised them so within a year, the maintenance cost is how much so far they are still within the range. And the two pioneer dairy install centrifuge, they mentioned that they never on every a couple of years, I haven't cleaned their nickel, but anticipate a couple of years down the road, there's no need to clean their nickel. So, Lydia, real quick, when you say they don't need to clean the lagoon, they still pump the lagoon, right? It's just not. No, no, yeah, educated. yeah. The, every year during the season, they will just use the pump, go through a paper system. When they men don't the clean, use a cavator, can dredge all the solids, all sonology from the bottom. They're not reached that point yet. Last question. What are the doing with That's uh, okay. How 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 do they deal with the uh, centrifuge seven solids? Uh, on our there is still composted. So since they have a higher nutrients, I guess uh, the farmer prefer the compost from a centrif centrifuge solids than the compost from open knot compost. So that's my, yeah. 